Um, I want to talk a little bit about Bob Hart's Abishola. Yes. This is a beautiful journey from where you started to being on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, Chuck Lorre on CBS. This is like, you know, prime, prime, prime stuff. Prime time, Yeah, baby. it's prime time, baby. Yeah. 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 Um, can you tell us how the show was created and how you got involved and in, in the origin story? I mean, it's a wonderful story. It's mm-hmm. a wonderful okay. story. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I'm hustling. I'm mm-hmm. making my own specials. I'm trying to get booked in America. I'm working, I'm working. I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm traveling all over the world. I'm, con- I'm on a plane every other week. And I'd, I'd almost become resigned to the fact, you know what? Maybe that's not going to happen for me. Mm. You know, I don't have the look. I'm a little, I'm always been ahead of my time. Mm-hmm. Always been ahead of my time. I've done things and then people have gone, mm, we're not ready. We don't get it. And then five years later, someone comes out doing exactly the same mm. thing and it blows them up. So it's happened to me constant, numerous times throughout my career where I've right. just been a little bit too ahead of my time so I thought uh, you know I was resigned to the fact I'm like, you know what I'm going to keep hustling mm-hmm. keep making my specials mm-hmm. pe- keep putting good content out there and then you know it is what it is if I get too tired of all this travelling maybe I'll go into public speaking or whatever I don't know so that was what my my thought process was mm-hmm. about a year ago I'd, I'd just come back from Just for Laughs uh, comedy festival in, in Canada, Canada right. and I got a call from my agent saying hey uh, and I'd had a killer set I'd, you know, I'd done the gala with Tiffany had issues, a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. She's Shout wonderful. Out to Tiffany. Oh, wonderful, to wonderful, yeah. wonderful woman. Yeah, she's like awesome. she's always she was doing this gala and she was like, I want Gina on it. You know, we've yeah. been friends from and she was like, I want Gina on this gala. I want Gina. And so I got to do this gala with her and it was great. And so I'd had a killer set, so I'd had a really good mm-hmm. festival. Came back and my agent calls me and goes, Oh, uh, I just got a call from Warner Brothers, uh, Chuck Lorre wants to meet you. You mm-hmm. need to fly over to uh, lost it because I was living in New York at the time. Fly over to LA and meet Chuck Lorre, and I was like, mm, Chuck Lorre, <laughs> name sounds familiar. Right, right. And my agent was like, Fuck, put the phone down, Google him, call me back. So obviously I Google him and go, Oh shit, Big Bang Theory, Two and a Half Men, mm-hmm. Grace on the Fire, all that. I was like, Oh my god. So I call back and I go, All right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to go to LA and meet this guy. And my agent was so excited. My manager was so excited. They were like, oh my God, if he's wanted to meet you. You know, that means he could be wanting to do a show with you. This mm. could be amazing. This could be fun. And they were very excited. Now, normally I've had many meetings like that over the years and they've always led to nothing. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, whatever. But with this, because they were so excited, mm. I started to get a little bit, despite myself, I started to get a little bit excited. And uh, so they, they were, he, he was like, yeah, they're going to fly you over. So I'm like, good. Are they fly me over first class? And my agent was like, no. No, no. And I was like, well, no, I've just come back from months on the road. Right. If they want to meet me, want, you know, I, I just Googled Chuck Lorre. I just Googled Chuck Lorre. He's, yes. he's worth $600 <laughs> million. Dollars. He's worth $600 right. million. He, They can afford first class. Right. So call him back and say, I want first class. Yes. So it went back oh, and forth for a while. Uh, yeah, you know, I know my worth, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing. Know your worth, people. Know your worth. Amen. So then they, they call back. And we're like, all right, we'll fly you first class. So they fly me out to LA. I go to the meeting with them. I walk in the room and it's Chuck Lorre and it's two of the guys, Al Higgins and Eddie Gordetsky, who have helped and create a lot of the shows, Mike and Molly and Kaminsky. Mm. So I walk into the room, I sit down uh, and long story short, Chuck is like, okay, so you're wondering why I brought you here? And I'm like, yeah, tell me. And they're like, well, uh, we really love Billy Gardell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> From Mike and Molly. Yeah. And I'm right. like, all right, what has this got to do with me? And they're like, uh, so we we really want to make a show with Billy Gardell and we're thinking, and you know, Chuck and Chuck had, had this idea, he'd been to Africa and he had an epiphany, he'd met all these beautiful people. And he's like, I want to make another show, not Mike and Molly, but I want it with Billy Gardell, but he falls in love with a, a, a Nigerian immigrant. And I go, okay, interesting. Right. That sounds like a very strange pitch. Yeah, mm-hmm. strange pitch. And I was like, so you want me to play the Nigerian woman? <laughs> and he goes, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I'm like, well, then what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Why the fuck am I doing? What the fuck? In my head. Right, in my right. head. In the room, I was like. I love your yeah. inner voice. Yeah, inner voice. Yeah. In the room, I was like, very interesting. So <laughs> what would you like me to do? <laughs> right. So they were like, well, we're three white guys. We can't write this show. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'd like to bring you in as a consultant. Mm-hmm. And I was like, in my head, I was like, fucking consultant. You brought me over. Here. So you just want to rip my ideas mm-hmm. of African culture and make a bullshit That's show right. for mm-hmm. CBS? Because I know I knew CBS's reputation when mm-hmm. it comes to diversity. So I was like, oh, this is some bullshit. But I didn't say it in the room. In the room, I was like, interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how did you find me? Now, I'm, I'm expecting, uh, you know, Eddie to say and Al to say, you know, uh, oh, yeah, we 
you know, we've seen your specials on Netflix. We saw Def Comedy Jam. We've mm -hmm. seen your work on the, the Daily Show as the British correspondent, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And he went, oh, um, we typed into Google Nigerian oh female comics and up he came. And oh my God. And in my head, I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> in my head in yes. my head okay kicking him in the throat yeah yeah in the in the room i was like oh interesting no so, i just it just brought me back to eddie murphy raw oh he said God. he said when you go in the dictionary it could be a picture of me like <laughs> <laughs> and you know and and that was you know they were honest and truthful mm -hmm. that that's how they found me they right. typed into google you know african female comics and uh, a few of us came up but obviously i was the best Oh, <laughs> and they found a set. Was that, that the I, picture yeah. from Google? <laughs> <laughs> and they found a set that I did. Well, I was mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen this set. It was a, it, it was a, Live with Apollo. It was a UK show. Funny mm -hmm. enough, people think it's the the Harlem the, the Apollo, Apollo Hammersmith. Yeah, it's the right. Apollo Hammersmith, which is three times the size of the Harlem Park. It's That's a huge right. TV show. We do black star shows there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you did. Yeah. Well, there you go. Plug. So it's a huge theatre, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's a TV show. And it's the biggest stand up comedy show mm -hmm. in the UK and Europe. And I did a set there where my mum was in the crowd, and I talk about my mum and the mm -hmm. immigrant experience and how my mum was uh, was a hard, you know, she drove us hard. And, and this and is one of the specials you did yourself. No, this yeah. was just a TV set. A TV, oh, it's wow. a TV show. It, yeah, right, it was right, a TV right. show. Okay. I did this set, and it was so funny because I used to get trolled in the UK. All she talks about is being black. All she talks about is being African. All she talk and I used to and it started to get into my head. Mm -hmm. And so when I was about to do that show, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a straight observational set. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to talk about my African heritage just to prove to these trolls I can do whatever comedy mm -hmm. I want. But then two days before recording the set, I was like, fuck these trolls. Exactly. I'm going to do what the hell I want. Right. So I did my material that I was going to do about my mum. And my mum was in the crowd and mm. I do a routine and my mum just stands up. Yeah, I've seen this. And the whole theatre goes crazy. Wow. And my mum is just like, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, that is me. I am the one. I yeah. am the one. <laughs> so that clip went viral. Mm -hmm. And that was the clip that they found. Can you imagine if I That's hadn't beautiful. done that That's set right. mm -hmm. and just done a regular That's exactly routine, right. I wouldn't be on this TV show now. Stay true to yourself. Stay true so to I stay true to myself, mm -hmm. stuck with my own instincts. So they found that set. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the, Eddie and Al told me the story later where Chuck was like, I want to make this show, African immigrant woman and Billy Gardell. And then he'd, he'd come in the room uh, about a week later and, they'd, and Eddie and Al had found that set and they'd had it paused on their mm -hmm. laptop. And Chuck had come in a week later and goes, forget this show, scrap it, because it's not going to work. How are we going to find a female Nigerian comic to help us with <laughs> this thing? I know three. Forget it, That's scrap right. the whole idea. And Obviously, then, he's never seen a Nollywood movie. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so then Ellie and I were like, what about this woman? And then they just turned the laptop around and pressed play. And then my set came up and mm. Chuck watched wow. it and laughed and went, was like, Get her over here. That's beautiful. So that's how they came about. So then I originally came in as a consultant. I, I, originally, I said no to it. Mm -hmm. I, I left the meeting with them and I yeah, said- Because that is a strange pitch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I called my agent yeah. and my manager and I was like, this don't feel right. I'm going to say no. Nah, to tell them thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to say no. But luckily, I've got people around me <laughs> who can tell me when I'm being a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. My brother and my best friend, Lila Rowe is my best friend in the UK and my brother, my younger brother, mm -hmm. Edwin. He's younger than me, but he's way smarter. Mm -hmm. And he calls me and he goes, you're my older sister and I have to give you m your respect as my older mm -hmm. si uh, sibling in Nigerian culture. But you are one dumb fucking bitch. Take <laughs> the gig. Right. Take right. the gig. This is a massive opportunity. You're too blinkered on your stand up. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're so blinkered. You don't see opportunities coming you from. You're so from, blinkered. Yeah. Right. I'm learning so much yeah. lingo for her. See, she's going to take that word and put I'm it in her I'm her like character. writing down notes. Okay. So <laughs> blinkered is when racehorses, racehorses. They put these leather blinkers on the side of their faces so that they can't see the other horses. So they can only see straight wow. ahead when right. they're re when they're racing blinkers. So that's where that come from. You're so yeah. blinkered, you're looking <laughs> just at what you want to do, but right. you're not seeing opportunities coming right. from left field. And my best friend also rang me up and 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 and, and abused me on the phone for an hour. So I got stereo abuse. I mean, stereo abuse. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'll come in and consult on this show for a few days mm -hmm. and then I'll go back my business. But then once I got in the room with Chuck and Al and Eddie, I realised they were genuine. Mm -hmm. We all kind of fell in love. We were vibing. And then I was like, you know what? This could be an opportunity to make a really good show. Mm -hmm. So then I started pitching and ideas. And a platform to Nigerian culture. But this is what I'm saying. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to really put my all into this. Even if they only can get, you know, give me a few days of money and then send me on my way, I'm going to give it all. So I started pitching ideas and pitching jokes and pitching characters. You know, I told them about my life, I, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. And, and it, it was going really well. And I could see them kind of looking at each other because I was, right. you know, I listen, I saved right. them a few times because at one point I was like, so what are you going to call the characters? And they were like, well, for Billy Gardell's character, we're going to go with Bob. Mm-hmm. And I go, what about the Nigerian character? And they were like, we're thinking, I don't know, uh, Lupita? No. Oh my God. And I was like, okay, stop, stop, guys. Right, You're right. fucking up already. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, right. let me explain something to you. Lupita is Kenyan, number one. Right. She's Kenyan. <laughs> Different country. She's Kenyan. <laughs> number two, she was born in Mexico. Right. So her parents gave her the name Lupita. Which is a Mexican know. name. Yeah, which is a Mexican. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee there's not another African on the planet <laughs> called Lupita. fucking Lupita. Right. <laughs> so we're not going to go with that. Here's a list of Nigerian names. I'm going to go with the Yoruba tribe. Uh, we're going to go, here's a list of Yoruba names mm. and their meanings. Pick one. And that's how we landed wow. on Abishola. So yeah, uh, about a few days in, um, Chuck comes into the room and says, look, uh, forget this consultant thing we'd like you to stay with us and help us create the show. So I was like, great. So then and I it's stayed. like mine from your experience. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. So I was mining, I was creating characters. Mm-hmm. And then obviously I'm thinking, this is going to be a show on CBS. Mm-hmm. I'm a performer. Yeah, put me in. I don't want to play Abishola. Because they thought I wanted the role of Abishola. Because mm-hmm. Chuck came in at one moment. But I was thinking ahead. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. I, my dream as a comedian, if you've read any interview with me, my dream has always been to be the best friend on someone else's sitcom. I did uh, I did read that. And when I thought that, I thought of Dave Chappelle's recent special when he was talking about Kevin Hart. And he said, that's a very strange dream for an African person to have. <laughs> to be the, oh. It's always been my dream. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. I come in, I steal scenes, I mm-hmm. bounce, and I use that mm-hmm. to sell out theatres. Because my first love is stand-up. Always right. will be. So whatever I do on television, whatever, I don't care about being a movie star. I don't want right. Kevin Hart's career. It's too much scrutiny. See, I don't not, want all that. I'm not Theo, I'm Cockroach. Yeah, I just want to But the best be, friend always yeah. gets, bo- gets steals the scenes. Yeah, Everyone I want to be the, the friend, friend, come in, do my da-da-da-da. Right. And then use that <laughs> to sell out theatres and arenas. Right. That was always been my dream. So when we started writing the show, I was like, I started pitching different characters. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Abishola needs a confidant, a mm-hmm. friend that she can go and talk to about this white guy chasing her. Mm-hmm. And so the character became Woman on the Bus. She, my character had no name. It was just called Woman on the Bus. Then halfway through, uh, Chuck comes in and goes, uh, all right, we're going to start casting this. CBS are interested in making this pilot. If you want the role of Abishola, you're going to have to audition mm-hmm. with the other actors. And I turned to Chuck and I was like, I don't want the role of Abishola, Chuck. I want... Woman on the bus. Woman on the bus. bus. Mm -hmm. And Chuck looked at me and he went, you're very fucking smart. (laughs) (laughs) And then, and that's how it became, the show it became. And and we we cast a wonderful Mm -hmm. actress for Mm -hmm. Lake Oluwa for Yeku to play. She's, yeah, she's really good. Phenomenal. The cast is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I saw... I um, mean, you have Chuck Laurie, he has access to... Yeah, but the thing is, it's, mm-hmm. it's so funny because he has the access, but you never, you know, you're not aware of all these Ni- this Nigerian talent out oh, there right, in the right, world. Abs- yeah. So we auditioned some wonderful people and I made sure I sat in the audition room. Amen. So that when these actors came into audition room, they see this face mm-hmm. and they know it's not bullshit. Mm-hmm. That's right. This is a good project. So I made sure mm-hmm. I was there. I saw uh, Shola Adewusu, who plays Auntie Olu. I saw her on Chewing Gum. Mm-hmm. And I remember <laughs> thinking... <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make a show about my life and I want her to play my mum. So then when the right. role of Auntie Ollie was coming up, I said to Chuck and the guys, look at this woman, Shola mm-hmm. Adewusi uh, on chewing gum, get her to audition. And she was in England. She's mm-hmm. British, Nigerian like me. She auditioned in England, she blew it out of the water, and that's how she got on the show. And so yeah, and that's it's great. It's You're providing beautiful. opportunities for uh, people. Yeah, that it's, must feel it's awesome. wonderful. It's so wonderful. So many gems you've dropped, so many lessons. You please uh, oh yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Nigerians are like, you know, uh, 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 over the moon about it the show's doing well Mm -hmm. you know the ratings are going up you know people are loving it which is wonderful because at first you see it and you go what is this Mm -hmm. what is this weird name yeah what is this it's odd and so people are finding it it's taking longer yeah but it's it's rising nicely and people are finding it and falling in love with it Get it, call me young, go.